everyone, Bob Wormsley here again from Insidium, and we're going to look at some more new features which you're going to be able to enjoy as part of the new X Particles early access release. This will be out really soon. Today we're going to look at Shatter. Shatter is a new tool that allows you to take any piece of geometry, shatter it into pieces, and then control those pieces using particles, modifiers, and the X Particles physics solvers. Let's jump into Cinema 4D and find out how it works. To get started, all you need to do is drop any scene object into an XP shatter generator, and you can see it gets broken apart into shards. And this has all of the controls that you would expect. We have got a display for drawing the cut edges on or off. We can draw the shatter points, which are used to calculate those shards. More on those in a minute. And we're able to colorize those shards. We can explode them out and we can change the mode from volume to surface, depending on what you require. We're also able to offset those shards. So let's have a little look at how these shards are calculated. By default, the um, pattern has been created by a point generator. So let's go to the display and draw those shatter points. So the point generator is creating these white dots which are influencing how these shatter points are calculated. We can increase the amount of points in those point generator settings for more shards or decrease it for fewer. We're able to change the random seed which will change the distribution of those points for different looks. We're even able to manually move these points around we do that with these point modifiers let's add a translate modifier and now I'm able to move those points on the X the Y and the Z axis for different looks we can also use scene objects to create our shatter points let's get our shatter object and in the layer we're going to drag in this sphere and this is what we want to create our points. And you can see that Shatter has spawned our points on the points of the actual sphere itself. So now if we move this around in our scene, you can see that it is the points of the object which are dictating how the shards are created. If we just move that out a bit, we're also able to layer this up. So we have these um, sphere points in our layer, but let's make a new source. We'll add a point generator. So this is going to create some additional additional shatter points and now when we move our sphere we're able to sub shatter this object in specific areas depending on where we put our scene sphere so this gives you a huge amount of control and versatility in breaking your objects apart in this scene, this flattened cube is being broken apart using a point generator. So let's just delete that point generator so we haven't got any shattered shards at all. Let's say we want to use this spline as the tool to shatter apart this cube. So let's drag the spline as a child of the Voronoi layer. And you can see that Shatter has created these points using the object points in that spline. So we can change that point type to have a more even distribution, well, a perfectly even distribution, if we generate points along the spline. So now it's generated 10 points along this spline. Let's increase that number or decrease it. And now we're getting a shatter dependent on these points. This isn't quite the look I'm after, though. So what we're able to do is use another point modifier to get a better look. And the point modifier that we're going to use is a spawn points. And what this will do, let's bring it in, it spawns additional points along every spline point. And we're able to dictate how many spawned points and the radius that those spawned points take around their parent point. So let's just increase that radius a little bit and increase the points. And if I just take the display of those shatter points off, you can see now we've got this fantastically intricate shatter following the path of this spline. 
We can also use particles to define where our objects are shattered. In this scene, we've got our cube and it has a default point generator creating these shards. Let's just delete that point generator so we have no shatter at all. We've also got an exposure effect sim happening here with this nice smoke rising upwards. So what we'll do is use that sim to add vect some particles. So there are particles are moving with that smoke. So now let's use these particles to define where our object is shattered. All we need to do is drag our particle emitter as a child of our Voronoi layer. And now wherever those particles are, it will dictate how our object is shattered. And we, of course, can play this with animation. And we're getting this really interesting shattering of our object in real time. Let's turn this scene cube into a pane of glass which we want to smash. So we'll take the cube and make it a child of our shatter object. This has a reflective transparent material. So there we have our window pane and you can see that we already have this really nice radial shatter pattern. If we go into the shatter object, we can see that the Voronoi point generator has been set to radial mode, which gives us this really nice look. And of course, this remains ed editable throughout, so we can increase the points or reduce the points. We can have more rings within this pattern or fewer rings. We're able to increase the maximum radius or decrease it really far down to get that kind of bullet hole look. This remains fully editable throughout the process. So let's just leave it at that for now. That looks pretty nice. So what we want to do is control these shards now and this really reveals the true power of shatter because what we're able to do is assign an emitter to the shatter object. So let's do that. We'll go to shatter. Let's drag in this emitter. And now you can see a particle has been born for every shard and we are able to manipulate these particles, which will then in turn make the shards follow. So let's activate this explode modifier and we should have these particles blasting away from it. Let's press play and there they go. So they're blasting away and it's the particles which are being moved and they are forcing the shards to follow. There's another feature which is very useful. If we go to the shatter object, we're able to tick auto particle radius and if we do that what happens is each particle is resized depending on the size of the shard it is assigned to so this is particularly useful for data mapping now i've told my explode object only to move particles of a certain radius so the bigger ones will stay still so let's have a look and now we've only got those internal particles spitting out. And of course, this remains completely editable right the way throughout the process. The particle-based control system of Shatter makes it incredibly versatile. Instead of using data mapping, in this scene we're going to use this spherical field to allow us to art direct which shards remove and shatter at what point. So there we can see we can shatter off those shards as and when we like. Now you can see that we haven't actually got any spin in these shards, they're just flying off which doesn't look particularly good. So let's activate this spin modifier and we can use exactly the same spherical field for this spin modifier and now we are getting these shards flying off and we're getting some nice spin as they're floating through the air so that makes this incredibly versatile but what we have here is nothing that's actually dynamic we're just kind of faking the dynamics in this scene so let's instead of doing that let's use real dynamics with the brand new X particles dynamic system so let's just deactivate that spin modifier for now and what we We'll do is we'll go to the um, let's go to the shatter object we'll go to tags X particles tags and let's put on a dynamics tag so we'll stick that on and this is going to birth some new particles so let's set it to distribution vertices and midpoints we'll go forward a frame and now we have got these dynamic particles which have been birthed onto our object so let's just go to the display and disable the display of those particles because we don't need to see them so now what we're able to do is still use our spherical field, but the particles are going to behave dynamically as that explode modifier blasts them away. And we're getting some really nice, realistic, 
um, and proper dynamic spinning and floating around in our scene. So that's very nice. And we can go one step further with this setup. Now that we have our dynamic particles spawned onto our shatter shards, we can um, spawn debris particles from their position. So let's just activate this spawn modifier and we'll go again. And now we're getting these really nice debris particles that are being spawned as and when our shards are blasting away from our pain. So incredibly versatile, easy to set up and art direct scenes using shatter with particle control and XP dynamics. Shatter has several settings which allow you to choose exactly when your object is shattered apart. In this scene, we've got a sphere, which is a child of this shatter, and it has an X-Particles Dynamics tag attached to it, which is helping it fall towards the floor. But it is not breaking into any pieces, and that's because if we look in the shatter settings, the one and only Voronoi layer isn't activated. So if I activate this Voronoi layer and hit play again, you can see that the object is broken apart immediately. And that is because the shatter layer is set to trigger always. So it just happens all the time. But we've got different options. Let's choose instead of always, time. So now it will shatter after whatever time you define in this box here. So I've got this set at 50 frames, so this will probably hit the floor before it breaks apart. So it hits the floor, and then on 50 frames, it shatters. We've also got speed, so it has to reach a specific speed before the shattering takes place. If I set this to, say, 2,000 centimetres per second, the ball's never going to reach that speed, and so it never shatters. Similarly, if we stick it down to, say, 5 centimetres a second, it will reach that speed almost immediately and then shatter. Let's put it to, say, 800 centimetres, and this will be a middle ground. It'll start by not shattering, and then halfway down its path, it's going to shatter that's when it gets the speed and it shatters into all of those pieces. There is another mode which is incredibly useful for visual effects and destruction shots. If we go into the trigger menu and pick collision, we can get this to shatter when the ball collides with an object. So in this instance, it's going to collide with the floor and when it does, it shatters apart. So incredibly useful and versatile triggering options for when your object breaks. We're able to use multiple shatter layers and use different triggering options for each for some pretty amazing recursive shattering techniques. So in this scene, we've got this dynamic sphere and we want to break it apart. So let's activate our first Voronoi shatter layer. And this one is set to trigger on time at 20 frames. So we hit play and after 20 frames, it shatters into the pieces that we have set. So that looks very nice. But what we want to do is add some sub shattering. So let's activate this second Voronoi shatter layer. And this one, the trigger is set to collision. And we want these pieces to shatter when they collide with scene geometry. So now if we hit play, they shatter after 20 frames. And now the sub shards shatter again once they hit the scene geometry, which is great. So let's go one step further. We will add another Voronoi layer. And this one again is set to trigger on collision, but we've set the collision speed really high. So only the very fast moving shards are going to shatter into really, really tiny pieces. And so we've got a massive amount of control here in shattering and then sub shattering those shards in a dynamic way. Great for those visual effects destructive scenes. There is one more triggering mode, which is very useful for setting up recursive shattering scenes. So here we've got this cuboid, which is being shattered with a Voronoi shatter. And it is set, as you can see, to trigger on the volume. And what we have done is created a volume container, which is set to be this sphere. So what happens if we play the scene, once the cuboid goes into that volume, the first break is initiated. 
And of course, we can layer this up. So if we go back to the shatter, we can add another Voronoi shatter. Again, the second one is set to be a volume container. Let's make it visible. And this time, the volume container is this cuboid. So if we play, we're going to get the first break then the second break and we have that nice sub shatter and of course we can layer up as many of these as we like so let's do a third we'll make the third volume container visible and now you'll see we're getting the first shatter then the second shatter as they enter that volume and then when those shards enter the final volume we're getting this third shatter as they break apart and of course remember this is entirely editable throughout so if we take the first shatter and let's just give it fewer points so it's only going to break into a couple of pieces initially there are the two pieces and when those two pieces enter the next volume zone they will shatter and then shatter again uh, we can make this let's try and push this a little bit more let's go to the final shatter and let's set this to a high number, say 30. So far more shards once the pieces enter this last volume. Let's have a look what happens. Here it comes. And then, bash, shattering to much more tiny pieces. And we can carry on uh, making adjustments until we're content. Let's put that first one back to 20. So we're going to get lots of pieces initially then lots of sub shatters and then lots more sub shards as they enter this final volume. So you can see we're still getting really decent viewport performance despite all of these individual dynamic shatter objects. So that is volume triggering for recursive shattering with the new X-Particles Early Access build. So that's X-Particles Shatter, really powerful shattering tool with all of the control that the X-Particles system gives you. This will be part of our new early access release, which is out really soon. To find out how you can get your hands on it as soon as it's released, then follow us on our social media accounts. It's Insidium you need to search for. And also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.